With the release of the Tournament of Sources subplot for Ninjago Dragons Rising came loads of vibrant new elemental masters and side characters. Unfortunately, because of budget restrictions, not all of these figures get to be made into physical minifigures, but it is clear that LEGO gave it their all in terms of trying to give as much as reasonably possible. So today, we're going to go through every minifigure produced for the Tournament of Sources. Starting off, we have the Wolf Mask Warriors, decked out in a whole new color scheme. There's a couple different versions of this figure with different accessories or lack of, but the primary look has these aggressive energy arms sprouting out the back. The face under the mask is still the one from the first wave back when they were blue, which does look a little out of place here, but it doesn't really matter since it'll be covered anyways. I think I like the red and purple color scheme for these guys a little more since it's not something you usually see anywhere else and it really makes these guys pop. Next up we have Cinder who's portrayed in his smoke form this time around which makes him much more fun to play with. Unfortunately for Cinder his face print is never as opaque as it should be so that definitely brings him down. The armor also looks a little out of place since the rest of the figure is so detailed and then when you get to the armor it's kind of plain as all the details are one color and it's very clear that this armor has different materials on it apart from just metal so I think maybe dual molding the side claws to light blue like the show would have helped a ton. It is worth mentioning you can reverse this armor piece to make it look like he's doing shatter spin at the moment. Jordana gets the better treatment this time around, which I find a bit ironic since the way before I felt like Cinder was a lot better. Her suit feels like a fusion of her Imperium background and wolf mask influence. The bronze highlights on her hips and a little bit of the back are absolute chef's kiss for this figure. Blecht is the uncle of Roby and the master of ceremonies for the tournament before Roby took over. He's got a very retro style with the tan suit, monocle, and pocket watch. I'm really glad we got a figure for him. Master Lloyd looks neat in his white robes. I like how they kept a youthful aesthetic for Lloyd while still portraying him as a master since he still has a lot to learn to become that typical wise ancient ninja master. He does come out decked out in armor, a little paper, and a staff decorated with his signature weapon on it but I prefer to take all that off since this is how he looks in the show. Here we have an unnamed blacksmith character that presumably resides in the city of temples. We didn't really see her in the show so she was mainly just a figure thrown in to help populate the tournament temple city set. Mr. Pale received an updated design this season which I think makes him look more like a Ninjago character now instead of a figure imported from Ultra Agents. He's pretty blinged out wearing a shirt decorated with dollar bills, a cool dark red suit, fedora, and to top it all off, a deluxe looking elemental symbol of light on his back. Next up we have our new ninja Eren, Sora, and Wildfire. All three have a very different structure from the suits our old ninja get this season to emphasize the gap in age and skill difference. Eren's color scheme with the key orange and dark blue mask works pretty well, although it does take a little bit to get used to. I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but I feel like he and Sora shared dark blue to signify their best friends and that they were a duo. Eren continues to use the dragon motif on his suit. With Sora, there's so many things that set her apart from the rest of the team. I really like that they kept her Imperium tech arm and the fact that she uses her headphones instead of a headband like the rest. Plus, instead of an elemental symbol, she chooses to have her signature cat theming. She still manages to keep that racing suit slash mechanic aesthetic from season 1. Wildfire looks more mature with her hair tied back in a top knot. I appreciate the designers conveying her character arc in the show through her design. The suit itself still stays true to the original more primitive look she had originally, but just styles it up a bit and also cuts down on the sand green a lot. She's got a cute little flame on the back and really subtle stitching printed on the suit which elevates it a lot. Tox got a huge makeover and like Mr. Pale also feels more in line with Ninjago's design language as she was also originally a figure from Ultra Agents the first time around. Still keeping the spikes and punk clothing but adding some Ninjago flavor to it with Ninjago's official language used on parts of her vest in the back. This time around her secondary color seems to be purple and a little bit of teal on that skull in the middle which really feels more in line with the element of poison. Lloyd, Nia, Kai, Cole, and Zayn all follow a very similar structure and they're all very vibrant. Although Kai's is a little less desirable since it never got used in the show. They all have their respective source dragon symbols on the back and neat dragon scaling patterns going down their suit. The armor piece is also perfect as it looks nice and it's not too big like some Ninjago armor tends to be. Lloyd's and Nia's both stick out to me really well since they're both so bright and colorful. The primary colors with yellow and gold work so well. 
Cole has a lot of interesting design choices going for him. The orange mask really grew on me after seeing it in animation, but it is a little odd that he didn't wear a headband like the rest of the ninja. I feel like with his long hair especially, he would want to keep it out of his eyes. Nonetheless, the figure by itself has this source dragon symbol on the back, which has this very interesting glowing look to it. Zane looks neat. The gold color of the armor piece really makes the otherwise silver and white figure pop. The usage of that icy blue color is a lot more reserved this time, and I like that. As usual, the source dragon print on the back looks really cool. Cole also got an alternate suit to wear while piloting his huge titan mech, and it deviates a lot from his original look. There's very minimal black here, and it leans towards orange being more of his primary color. The detailing on this figure is very crisp, although I think it looks better with his hair, since the mass usage of black as a secondary color doesn't mesh as well with the rest of the suit, which is primarily using shades of white, orange, and gray. Roz is completely decked out and pulling off the shirtless look this season. I wasn't sure about the use of his light blue accents originally, but after looking at the figure for a while, it works pretty well in my opinion. I kind of wish we got pink stripes instead of the red we see here to be more accurate to how he usually is, but nonetheless, this figure still looks fantastic. Especially love the brutish rope he uses as a makeshift belt and armor hanging down from chains on the back. With the Temple Guard, I really wish we got more of these instead of just the one exclusive to Tournament Temple City as there were quite a bit in the show. But looking past that, I enjoy how the tech on this one is very old looking. That plus the nozzle on its mouth makes these guys look cool, but also like something the ninja should be a little cautious around. Euphrasia is a very welcome figure to get, especially after how prominent she's been in Dragon's Rising so far. The face print doesn't really match her too well, but it is understandable given it's a borrowed design from LEGO City and the Ninjago designers only had a budget for so many exclusive characters this year. The white and baby blue on her suit kind of reminds me of colors typically seen in the sky, which captures the element of wind really well and kind of represents Euphrasia coming more into the role as her first grayish outfit was just something she wore as a normal cloud monk back when she was ashamed of her powers. Lego gives you the option to swap between hair and hood too. Evil Jay is an absolute treat. Jay's decorated with a mix of Wolf Mask Clan influence and his signature lightning details. The dark blue with black as a secondary color is a first for Jay and looks both cool and intimidating. And to wrap this video up, we have the Master of Ceremonies, Roby. This figure is very simplistic, but thanks to the show, it has a ton of charm and personality to it. Like his Uncle Blecht, he has some ornate detailing on the back, and I'm happy LEGO went through the effort to make him in the first place. And that is it for every figure from the Tournament of Sources wave. Comment down below which one is your favorite. Personally, I'm stuck deciding between Master Lloyd and Evil J. Thank you for watching, and as usual, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye